The Tale of Willem Eth Bartson Willem Eth Bartson had a love of steam power from as early as he could remember. But his obsession with constructing a steam-powered space rocket, with the intention of landing on the moon would cost him his life. A strange, only child, with peculiar sensitivities, Willem was nonetheless lovingly adored by his father Ethelfrith, and his mother, Mildritha. Without being spoilt, Willem's relatively well-off parents, left him wanting for nothing. Excessive teenage awkwardness, and masturbation, was replaced by a keen, almost obsessive interest in the study of mechanical engineering, and thermodynamics, encouraged by his scientifically literate parents. As a grown man, Willem would more often than not, pose for photographs in one of his bespoke space suits, or inside a mock-up rocket. His fiancée Elspeth would always participate under duress, even on their wedding day. Upon completion of his engineering degree, Willem immediately began designing and constructing a range of steam-powered masturbation aids, and sex dolls, which proved so popular with the men folk, he soon became one of the Northern Hemisphere's wealthiest weirdos. Always preferring the company of those he could exploit or he considered beneath him, over the years Willem became benefactor and guardian to a number of boys touched with Down's syndrome from various orphanages. They were graciously provided with food and lodgings in workers' cottages on his estate. However, the fate of these boys and the callous disregard Willem expressed towards them during the testing program of his steam-powered space rocket, would eventuate to be the greatest poo streak on his legacy. Design and construction of the steam-powered space rocket and steam-powered lunar lander began in earnest at the beginning of 1852. Working non-stop on a diet of oats, milk, cheese, and amphetamines, Willem went from drafts, to construction, to testing in less than a year. As there was no precedent for a steam-powered space rocket, trial and error was the only testing method available. Rocket after rocket was destroyed. Property, livestock, infrastructure and places of worship full of congregations throughout Snoot Horton and neighboring villages were all destroyed by one of Willem's rogue experiments. Finally after a successful launch, Willem immediately began test flights with local village cats, or catronauts as Willem named them, placed inside a capsule on top of the rocket. Failure after failure followed. After discovering a solution correcting the steam distribution problem the rockets were experiencing upon liftoff, a string of successful launches followed. The fate of his adopted sons was now sealed. Forced into space suits, drugged with opium, then loaded into the steam-powered space capsule on top of the steam-powered space rocket. The boys were intended to test the effects of zero gravity on the human body. Unfortunately they only experienced extreme g-force loading, or fire. Bizarrely, Willem attempted to dismiss his multiple crimes, Explaining to authorities the remains of his Astro Boys were merely anatomically correct analogues covered in pig skin. After successfully bribing appropriate Snoot Horton lawmakers, he was given a green light to proceed. A successful launch into Earth's orbit and a landing in a field just four miles away, occurred in spring that year, although a pressurization malfunction resulted in the death of the Downs Syndrome astronaut Ethelbert. However, Willem was confident enough that he could now attempt his own flight. Willem's planned voyage to the moon aboard the steam-powered space rocket was always intended to be a one-way trip. Impossible to also transport the vast quantities of coal and water required for a return trip to Earth, if successful, Willem believed the moon landing alone would be considered the most glorious self-sacrifice and accomplishment in all human history. With his name and noble spirit commemorated through the generations. The morning of the launch, 
Willem had a severe case of diarrhea due to nerves. Approaching the launch pad and observing the pulsing phallus, which was the steam-powered space rocket, moan and groan whilst being fired up and pressurized, caused him to immediately soil his spacesuit. This, was it? Everything he had worked and killed for. Hoisted up the launch tower, into the steam-powered space capsule, on top of the steam-powered space rocket, Willem seated himself in the cockpit and began the pre-launch sequence. That afternoon, at exactly 12 minutes past 2, on Friday June 16, 1854, Willem pulled knobs and released pressure valves which began the lift-off sequence for his three-day voyage to the moon. He was away. Observers on the ground including his now distraught wife Elspeth were shocked at how violent liftoff was. Many mistakenly believing that the steam-powered space rocket had exploded. However, as it rose from the mighty cloud of steam, the same observers now ran for their lives to avoid a scolding death from the superheated cloud rolling towards them. Inside the capsule, Willem was violently buffeted back to front, side to side. He was finding it difficult to remain conscious due to the extreme g-forces produced from his absolutely crack trajectory. He was extremely lucky to escape Earth's gravitational force at all. But then, zero gravity. He had done it. The steam-powered space rocket stage separation sequence went smashingly with the discarded booster stage crashing into a local farmhouse and dairy. Thankfully it is unknown if anyone was killed or injured. In the year prior to launch, Snoot Horton Observatory had been purchased and all staff hired by Willem, to produce all Newtonian calculations for his voyage. They were tracking Willem through their telescope and by the completion of the day were happily surprised he was on course for the moon. Upon the next morning, Willem used the steam-powered poop chute for the first time. A repulsive experience, requiring attachment of a six-inch drainage hose to the posterior of the space suit. The hose then met with an outlet in the steam-powered space capsule wall and his putrid waste was ejected into space. Reading and annotating his Bible, writing in his journal, combing his beard whilst singing, and general tidying up, were all methods used by Willem to fight the inevitable boredom of a three-day journey cramped in a steam-powered space capsule to the moon. Willem's diet for the voyage consisted solely of dried beef, dried fruits, and dried water. Monday morning. Moon day. The steam-powered space capsule was maneuvered into position by Willem for the steam-powered lunar lander to be jettisoned with him at the controls. Valves were then released and the steam-powered lunar lander began the descent to the surface of the moon. Through great skill or great luck Willem was on target to land inside a moderate-sized crater which had a smooth surface in the center and no hazardous boulders to contend with. The steam-powered lunar lander made contact with the surface of the moon. A feeling of elation combined with great relief spread through Willem. Frankly he knew he was better than anyone or anything. Willem decided to use the steam-powered poop chute one final time. Belching steam and black smoke and making a cacophonous noise it powerfully jettisoned his disgusting filth onto the surface of the moon. Willem redonned his space helmet, opened the oxygen valve, began the timer, and prepared to step out. Unaware the external steam-powered stepladder had failed to extend, and Willem's lower range of vision being obscured by his helmet, he blindly stepped off the steam-powered lunar lander and fell two meters into his freshly laid putrid filth. He had three hours of oxygen in his tank, and now finally on the moon, and in the final moments of his life, he had no idea what to do. He wandered around, kicked up moon dust, threw some rocks incredible distances, and drew a cock and balls picture with his fingers in the ancient lunar soil. 
Earth began to appear on the horizon. Willem whispered to himself, Elspeth. The oxygen level warning alarm sounded. Willem returned to his steam-powered lunar lander and closed the hatch. He then began to write his final journal entry. Concluding with the word bugger. The warmth and glow provided by the last remaining furnace coal in the steam-powered lunar lander, faded. The village of Snoot Horton was submerged in 1887, after construction and completion of the Flintthwaite Dam, downstream. All buildings and historical records were lost. All knowledge of Willem Eathbartson disappeared. On 31 January 1971, the crew of Apollo 14 blasted off from Cape Canaveral for a voyage to the moon. Unaware they were about to have their little red necky pecker head minds blown away. Alan Bartlett Shepard, hitherto the first American in space, and Edgar Dean Mitchell, a keen handball enthusiast, landed three days later and immediately began playing golf. Upon retrieving one of his golf balls, about a mile away from where he had teed off, Alan Shepard crested the rise of a moderate crater. His jaw dropped. Inside the crater was Willem Eathbartson's now 117-year-old steam-powered lunar lander. Alan Shepard radioed to Edgar Mitchell and they both approached the aged and dusty, steam-powered lunar lander. Opening the hatch, Alan Shepard came face to face with the skeletal remains of Willem Eathbartson seated in the cockpit, inside his space suit with his helmet on. NASA were now in a dilly of a pickle. To reveal the existence of a successful human moon landing 115 years before Apollo 11, would nullify all their hard work, cause loss of national prestige, and risk all future congressional funding. However, this great man, Willem Eathbartson, had sacrificed his life through hard work and diligence for a noble cause and should be respected, if not worshipped, as a demigod. The decision was made to retrieve all of Willem Eathbartson's personal items from the steam-powered lunar lander. They were placed in a carry bag containing assorted moon rocks, and brought back to Earth. For fifty years, they remained in a plastic mill crate in the catacombs beneath the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. In the year 2021, all classified NASA documents were released by the National Archives including Willem Eathbartson's journals. And his strange story, and life, was revealed.